location rating survey is undertaken by ETA International on an annual basis. Um, the aim of the survey is to help companies determine what we call location allowances um, or they're also known as hardship allowances within the industry. Now, a location allowance is provided by a company um, to recognise the extent to which an employee may need to adjust or adapt their lifestyle um, when they're sent to what we call a host location. And a host location is essentially the, the location to which the employee will be sent by the company to work. When we undertake this survey every year, at the moment we currently survey over 400 locations worldwide. And these are, these are the 400 locations where most multinational companies send staff. Um, topping the survey this year uh, in terms of being the most livable um, is Singapore. Um, behind Singapore, um, in terms of the Asian locations which we surveyed, um, is then number two being Kobe and number three being Hong Kong. Um, now, Singapore, the reason why it ranks number one is because we look at several criteria when we're looking at the, when we're assessing the location allowance. And we're looking at criteria which we consider to have an impact on a person's day-to-day -day lifestyle. So this could be things such as the quality and availability of goods and services in the local supermarket in the host location, or it could be things such as crime rates, social political tensions, the quality of air, um, health facilities and health risks. So when we look at all of those factors, um, we see that basically Singapore scores the best in all of these criteria, which is what really ranks it as being the most livable location for Asian assignees. The scores reflect not just the living conditions in the host location, they also reflect the adjustment that will be required on behalf of the employee, taking into account where they're from. So our scoring system fully acknowledges the fact that somebody being seconded from Hong Kong to Singapore, for example, will probably more easily adjust to the environment in Singapore in comparison to somebody from Western Europe or North America, reflecting the fact that there will be greater similarity between Hong Kong and Singapore versus either Western Europe or North America and Singapore respectively, owing to um, closer ties in terms of cultural um, similarity, climate similarity, and also um, geographic distance. For example, if you look at the distance between somewhere like Hong Kong and Singapore, same time zone, three to four hour flight, so it's relatively easy for a person to maintain their relationships with family, friends and colleagues back in their home location, versus an assignee perhaps from Western Europe um, going to Singapore, where there's a much larger time zone difference, seven or eight hours, depending on which part of um, Europe you're coming from, and also um, reflecting the fact that because of that greater distance between the home and the host location, it becomes more difficult to maintain relationships with family and friends in the home location, adding to that greater degree of adaptation that will be required for the European being seconded to Singapore versus the person from Hong Kong being seconded to Singapore. What it's not is many companies consider that if you pay a location allowance to staff when you're sending them to what we call, um, I suppose, dangerous locations places such as maybe Iraq, Afghanistan, even some locations in Africa. Some companies 
when they're sending staff to these difficult locations, um, consider a location allowance as reflective of the fact that the employee is thrust into a certain degree of danger and they believe that, well, if we provide you with a location allowance, you should use this um, in order to protect yourself. That's not what a location allowance is designed to do. It's not necessarily what we call a reward or danger pay. Um, when companies are sending staff to locations, such as particularly difficult locations, while a location allowance is designed to reflect the extent to which the employee will experience, as mentioned, difficulties or an adjustment to their lifestyle, um, while the location allowance is designed to reflect that, the company should also be taking other steps in order to protect or safeguard their employees. Um, things such as evacuation plans, perhaps, or security measures. For example, um, when we saw last year, in 2011 in Japan, when we saw a tsunami and therefore the subsequent nuclear disaster um, that we saw in the northeast of Japan, many companies that did not review their location allowances at that time. Why not? Because a location allowance is not a reward for putting someone in dangerous way. What they did is they looked at other measures in which they could safeguard their expatriate staff who were sent there. So what they did is they looked at evacuation plans. Can we evacuate our staff from locations which were potentially dangerous, such as Tokyo, to other locations in Japan, such as Osaka, or even to um, other locations elsewhere, such as Hong Kong and Singapore. So that's what the location allowance is designed to do, and that's what the location allowance is not designed to do.